Now I would like to introduce and recognize a very special trustee who began volunteering in this building as a child when it was the original Exeter Library. He has served over 35 years as a trustee, having been appointed in 1982. He has served as past president from 2000 to 2007, vice president of the board, and vice chairman of programs. His exhibits, tours, and contributions to the society have educated and entertained members and visitors over the past three decades. We would like to honor with a Lifetime Achievement Award by naming the front entry hall in his honor, our beloved and well-known trustee, Peter Smith. $32,528. The Fog Rollins restricted fund balance was $73,983. Um, 
$1,500 with a projected shortfall of $31,657. Uh, Barbara, our curator, gave a membership report. The membership stood at 237 uh, with different levels of membership. 100, in, 100 individuals, 78 families, 47 sponsoring, two small businesses, eight sustaining, one corporate, and one marrow for a total of 50800 towards the operating budget. Ann Schieber presented the uh, amendments to the bylaws of the Exeter Historical Society, which were approved by the Board of Trustees. Um, previously, we had two vice chairs for finance and programs, and we amended that to a vice chair of development and a vice chair of finance and governance. A motion was made to elect new trustees, uh, Fran Hall, to fill a vacant seat, which expired, expired in 2017, Joan Caldwell for a three-year term, Judy Rowan for a three-year term, Viviana Santos for a three-year term, Caroline Seeke for a three-year term, and Schieber for a three-year term, and a motion was seconded and approved uh, for these trustees. Um, we announced the executive committee, uh, the board chair, Ann Schieber, the treasurer, Viviana Santos, vice chair for finance and governance, Ron Goodspeed, vice chair for development, Judy Rowan, and secretary, me. One, the officers shall serve one year terms to be re-elected each year per the bylaws. The motion was made to approve this slate of officers and the second and approved. And then the meeting was adjourned. It's respectfully submitted by me, or is one. Thank you. My job. <laughs> Thank you. Great. And now I'd like to um, recognize and introduce our treasurer, Julie Aben, who will now report on our current balance. Hello. Um, I just want to give you two balances. The balances as of 1231, the fiscal year end, and the current balances as of today. Um, the citizens checking account had 9,570 at December 31st, and today we have $66,764. Uh, the Raymond James accounts as um, 1231, in total uh, 189,640, and today we currently have 191,753. Of that, 86, $1,021 is restricted for the bond wellness account. Thank you. And now I'd like to uh, introduce Ed Brownman, Rowan, our chairman of the nominating committee, to announce our slate of trustees for membership approval. As you know, we have uh, 15 members of the board of trustees and elect five or three year terms each year. So this current slate is for uh, 2017 to 2020. Uh, first is uh, Julie Javon, who uh, came on the board in March to fill a vacancy after a resignation. She's serving as our treasurer and chair of the finance committee and has been busy going over all the old finance records and trying to make sense of it. Uh, what was it? Second is Vicki Geis. Vicki also came on board in March to uh, fill a spot created by a resignation. Uh, Vicki is uh, uh, an IT person with Fidelity, is uh, very active in the uh, uh, Phillips Exeter alumni community, and she serves as chair of our volunteer committee. She's busy writing volunteer manual. The third person is Fran Hall, who was elected a year ago to a one-year term. Uh, she is a retired professor in the business school at UNH. She currently serves as chair of our governance committee and is busy rewriting all the literature that we need to function adequately. Next is Lori Zwan, who this would be her second term. She's an office manager who's served as our secretary. And fifth is Pam Jetta. This, I think, is her third term. Uh, and Pam is a super volunteer. 
And uh, I, I heard the other day that somebody remembered her when she was a librarian here, and they're still afraid to come in because they owe three cents for the <laughs> I would also uh, mention that all of these, these five people are uh, members of the society at the Merrill level, indicating their commitment to the future of the society. That's not a requirement, but uh, it indicates uh, their dedication. So those are the five people who are nominated by the nominating committee. Are there any nominations from the floor? Hearing none, I will ask if someone will cast a, will make a motion that we uh, elect this slate by acclamation. So moved. We'll hear a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It is done. Thank you very much. And in closing of our annual meeting, I'd like to introduce Vicki Guys, our volunteer committee chairman, and Stacy Penna. Um, to present a PowerPoint presentation um, created by both of them that will give us a year in review and our case for giving. Will you be able to hear me? No. Yes, okay. So, thank you, Liz. It's my pleasure to introduce a year in review. It's always exciting to look back at what we've accomplished and we've put together a single slide, it's a bit of an eye chart, um, but what it's meant to show is the touch points that our society has with the community in general. We have an obligation to meet our membership in the forum that best meets their needs. So for some of our members, visiting the building is not possible. So they need to review the website for our programs and the historical minutes. Some of our members come in and use the library. Some come to this room for programs, like tonight. And others come to volunteer their time. So this shows a little bit of the impact over the past year on our outreach. The numbers, the numbers we hope to improve over the next year for, we have targeted uh, projects to work on building these numbers up over the next year. And what's important to look at here is this will be a baseline for next year as we look at what we've accomplished and understand whether or not we've hit the mark with what our membership is looking for. So these numbers will continue. And as we look at the year ahead, there are several things that we need to get after. So one is a tighter partnership between the Board of Trustees and the membership. We heard you loud and clear. We have the same goal. It's very important for all of us to work together to make sure we are doing the best for the society. We need to amplify the fundraising. So in a few minutes, you're going to hear from Stacy about a case for giving. So it's no longer enough for us just to meet the financial obligations of our operating, um, in, uh, operating expenses. We need to be able to improve our outreach, to expand our collections <coughs> management, and, and improve the building. And for that, we need additional funds. We also need to prioritize digital transformation. So that comes in many forms. So part of that is the communications with our membership, online, email, when possible. Part of that is recording oral histories. And part of that is also digitizing the collections that we have today to preserve them. That will be an ongoing effort as long as the society exists. That will help all of us for better retrieval and access to the information that we have. What, what people see, what membership sees in this building on this floor is just a fraction 
of what the society holds. And we want to make that more available to our membership. We want to increase exhibit rotation. So as visitors come to our site, we want them to see fresh exhibits. They want to come more often, build more engagement. And expand the volunteer program. As Ed mentioned, I'm working on, uh, along with Viviana Santos, who couldn't be here tonight, we're working on a program, a training guide for volunteers. We're defining job descriptions and schedules for volunteers to come in and help us. And then we plan to have ongoing training as new exhibits come in. So as people off the street visit our society, they are met with people who, who understand what the society is about, what the town has to offer for history, and what the other um, American Independence Museum, Cincinnati Society, how those all fit with the bigger picture of the history of Exeter. Improving the facilities. So over the summer, we'll be closing down the building for a bit so that we can create uh, access, wheelchair access for our members. Right now, we are excluding a number of our membership because they physically cannot get into our building. We'll be doing some climate control. This will be done over time. We cannot afford to do everything in one year. We do have a strategic plan to make sure that we can maintain the facility. We have to protect our collections. And with that, we need climate control to do it. And as always, we need to advance our strategic plan. So continuing to look ahead, we have a number of activities and events already planned through 2018. Uh, and even though the society building will be closed for a good part of the summer, um, you can see we have a lot of activities going on. And we, the society, will be out and about. We will not be closed. Any questions? OK. With that, I will turn it over to Stacy. does. Uh, so the research library, the archives, the collections, um, we do town projects here. A big part of what we do is our program outreach. So a program like you saw today, we go into the schools, um, we uh, borrow a lot of curator presentations, um, and then we have the Nancy Merrill History Award Contest that was just a few weeks ago, the historical speaking, the extra history minutes. Um, you know, goals, I think Vicki sort of we have even more than these now. Um, so just to recap for people that weren't aware of um, the board had to make a tough decision in January when we had to vote on our budget. We had a projected budget of this, meaning we have a shortfall of our almost $42,000 um, based on the budget we were given. Um, so as a board, um, we decided we had to have a balanced budget, which basically meant um, we could no longer afford to have staff for as many hours as we did. So we put in a line item for um, an independent contractor and went from there. Um, and so we were at this current state really back in January. Um, and so we had, we looked and we said, okay, we have, um, the fiscal year, uh, would there be shortfall of 42,000? We had the endowment that you heard was higher last year because we had to take we had to take from the endowment each year to pay um, our negative amount from our budget, um, and we felt 103,000. We really couldn't go lower than that and do another maybe 30 to 42,000 um, this year out of the budget. Um, part of the reason for that is the collections. If there was some issue with the collections. Um, we, and we had to pack them up and bring them to Concord. I guess the estimate is like $60,000 to do that. And so we want to make sure we had a safety net for a lot of different reasons, also for this building. Um, and so we then just had to, had to make that decision without the staff. Um, but with really all the efforts of the membership 
and um, the newspaper and getting the word out, we were very lucky that somebody really came came to Anne and said we will you know, generously donated forty-two thousand dollars, which was what we really needed to keep our staff on for another year. So I think that was very very generous, and we really appreciate that. And round of applause for that. <laughs> You know, for this fiscal year, we're, we're ahead of the game, and now we can, you know, obviously have to continue fundraising, but it's, it's a great position to be in. Um, so Vicki put this chart together, which is very helpful, because it's showing our membership drive from last year to this year already, and we're only halfway really through the fiscal year, right, which is awesome. Uh, annual calendar, which Ron Goodspeed really does all of that. We, we predict we'll get another 6,000 at least, maybe more this year, Ron, who knows? <laughs> uh, major donating uh, fundraising events. So we've had a few here um, where Barbara uh, does talk, we, we charge like $25. So, we're, like you said, the garden party, we're going to do more that we're hoping to really increase that amount by a significant amount. Um, and then annual appeal was 7,000 last year, but we're hoping again with this uh, new increase of um, enthusiasm that will go up too. So already, I mean, we're, we're above what we made last year. We're only halfway through the fiscal year. So that, that's really good news. Um, so, and our goal is we really each year to keep staff and operating budget. We really have to bring in $71,000, $72,000 a year. Um, so, you know, it doesn't stop. Um, even though know, we had that really, really nice big donation. Um, so the way, one way we need to do this, you can see membership, it's almost double from last year. That's a huge thing for us. <laughs> so we still need to increase membership. Um, and so we have the different levels here. Uh, and you can see to get to that 39K, you know, how many people we have to get to. So obviously if we have more people do 1,000, <laughs> that would be a lot easier for us to get there, <laughs> or even 500. Um, and that's where membership, where people went door to door, was excellent. You know, trying to get people to join was very, very good. Um, so, uh, you know, we can't do this without you. Obviously, it's not just the board; it's the membership, it's the volunteers. Uh, so, it's not only the money, which we just talked about. It. It's about time being a volunteer, and you heard Vicky um, uh, is going to be working on that um, artifacts, and that we get donations all the time, and all that takes time to collect and, and archive. Um, so we just want to thank you uh, from the board for all your support and uh, your hard work over this last year. Um, and especially, I think we should thank um, the SOS committee that you know has been spent a lot of time and effort uh, trying to you know help us um, fundraise and uh, and get more uh, from our membership. And that's it. So thank you. That concludes our program this evening. Um, we have lots of refreshments. I think there's more beer and wine left. <laughs> so you could please eat and drink. And, and thank you so much for a fantastic year and for being here.